Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about culturally responsive teaching. So I have a few questions for you. Also, by the way, this is Ryan Clemenson, my co-teacher. Oh, thanks you for having me today. I really appreciate that. Hi, I'm Lisa Ross, and I am in my 31st year of teaching here at Las Palmas High School. I teach English 9, but I've taught other grade levels along the way. And this year is my honor to co-teach with Max Goolsby. Hi, I'm Leah Nunez. Uh, I'm an English teacher at Willows High School, and I have had the privilege of being Zoe's mentor. Hi, my name is Nicole Berti, and I am a high school English teacher at Gridley High School. I mainly teach English and ELD and AP language and development, and I've been teaching high school for the last 10 years. So my first question for you is, how would you define culturally responsive teaching? Well, I believe culturally responsive teaching could probably be best defined in a nutshell as pay attention to the color of your kids. They don't all come into the same shapes and sizes and certainly not from the same backgrounds or the same creeds. And you've got to figure that out. You've got to figure out who your population is made up of because otherwise you are going to be absolutely um, at a disadvantage trying to create curriculum that's going to mean anything to them. Um, I would define it as incorporating the students' backgrounds, their cultures, into the learning. Culturally responsive teaching, teaching CRT, CRTL, uh, it goes by a, a couple of different acronyms here at Las Palmas High School. Um, and it's new to me. When I began my teaching career, we were not learning any of these kinds of um, disciplines or information. And so yeah, as a veteran teacher of 30 years, I've, I've had to learn what it means to be culturally responsive in my teaching. And how I would define it, at least what I know at this point, I'm sure there's a lot more that I have uh, to learn in the years ahead, but how I would define it is it is making sure that I am aware of the difference uh, in students in our classroom and aware of their home culture, but also their socioeconomic status, maybe even something as simple as uh, what feeder school they came from, uh, just understanding that uh, students in my classroom, I'm not just here to teach them how to read, write, speak, and listen, but I'm here to also tap into um, who they are as people. Um, culturally responsible teaching to me is understanding that everyone in my class comes from a different experience, a different background, a different cultural expectation, and understanding that those differences is actually an asset within my classroom that we can utilize. Another question is, what does this actually look like? What does culturally responsive teaching look like in your class? Well, in my classroom, it looks like um, a lot of really violent novels um, full of horrific events that examine some of the underbelly of our American society and uh, bring relevance to why we need to continue to discuss race, to discuss creeds, to discuss diversity. Um, and I found that through the selection of certain novels, particularly The Devil's Highway, I'm really able to connect with the heavy Latino population in my classroom and find that I get a lot more engagement. Uh, culturally responsive teaching in my class has um, helped me, I think, become a better teacher. So when I first started teaching, I really liked a quiet, quiet classroom. I believe that quiet meant that kids were learning and that they were working. And uh, I felt good about that for many years until I began to learn more about how <clears throat> students learn. And so now I, I actually don't like a, uh, necessarily like a quiet classroom because it doesn't always mean that students are learning. And so culturally responsive teaching in my classroom, I'll just give you one example. I could give you a handful, but one example that I have incorporated that I didn't have in my early years of teaching is I will ask students a question and I will say to them something like, shout it out. There's a question, shout it out. And uh, in my early years of teaching, no, I would have never done that. And now I do it a lot. I don't overdo it because then <clears throat> um, it, you know, like anything else, can you can overdo it. Uh, but there are definitely times when it is appropriate. And I notice that some students who maybe uh, don't tend to share uh, will uh, engage with the shouted out. 
Well, uh, the nice thing about English is it's very versatile. So you can pretty much take any topic and teach the English language arts skills. And so with that, um, it's very easy to pull in um, the students' backgrounds, their cultures, their interests into the lessons. And um, so uh, I always try to relate the lessons to the students. Um, also, I teach ELD, so I try to um, promote uh, my students in ELD, bringing in their culture in the classroom. Um, so things like that um, with projects and such, like this year Zoe and I did a, um, well, it's mostly Zoe led, but um, a food, uh, an ethnic food uh, project with the ELD students. And so they got to bring their favorite dish that was from their culture. So that was a fun day. Um, culturally responsive teaching in my classroom means that I'm integrating texts that is written by that person that has lived that life. I understand that as a white female, it's almost irresponsible to give my perspective on a society in which I do not um, belong to. So for example, for night, we read a Holocaust survivor's story, Eli Wazell's, because he experienced it from his perspective. A Raisin in the Sun is written by Lorraine Hansberry, whose family lived um, discrimination policies and the racial divide of Chicago. So understanding the people that live the story should respectfully tell the story. Why is culturally responsive teaching important in all classrooms? Well, a great professor at Chico State once told me that the most effective classroom management is an engaging lesson. And circling back to what I started with, you cannot create an engaging lesson for a diverse classroom, especially in the state of California, without culturally diverse teaching, without that culturally responsive teaching and selecting things that it can connect to your students. Um, if you choose not to, and you just go ahead with whatever feels good, whatever you enjoy, whatever is culturally resonates with you, um, you might enjoy it for a year or so, but you're gonna slowly watch this trend of disengagement with your students and, well, your class sucks, it's gonna be boring. In order to engage the students uh, they need to feel like, you know, they have some connection to what they're learning and obviously bringing in their culture and their background to the lessons um, and into the classroom validates them and makes them feel included and hopefully invested in the learning. Uh, important because I think in the information age we're starting to learn um, a lot more about how people think. Um, a lot more about how people uh, connect with one another, how we inter are, are interrelated with one another. And um, I think that it brings another lens that classroom teachers can look through to see the human beings in their classroom. And it makes the, it makes the teaching and the learning um, have a lot more depth to it. And um, it builds community and as we build community and classroom culture in our classrooms, it's, uh, the learning just gets better and better. So thank you, Ryan. Appreciate you taking time to talk with me. Well, thank you, Mr. Shiflett, and good luck, resident teachers. I wish you all the best in your next year of educational adventures. Clemson out.